This message uh, really has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, I've, I've been working on it for a few weeks, and uh, me and Jennifer and the girls, we were able to get away last week, and uh, we're glad to be back with you. Uh, but it is, it is great to be back here. If you ch- look there in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Well, when you back up to the first couple of verses there, if you have your Bibles open, you'll notice this is where Jesus, he comes into this area. He looks at his disciples and he tells, and he sees all the situations that are going on. And it says that Jesus himself, he sat down and he started talking to his disciples. He was teaching. And the very first thing was this beatitude that he taught the disciples. Now, there is a phrase that I came across in my study, and you'll notice that there on the screen it says, the American dream is to get it all. The kingdom dream is to give it all for a greater good. Now, many times when we notice this part in the Beatitudes, we see the word poor, and we think about someone's checking account. We think about the preacher having no money. Y'all can go ahead and say amen. But anyway... That is not what the Lord is talking about. He is not talking about finances here. He says poor in what? Not finances, spirit. And there's going to be a few definitions that are going to be there on the screen. I want you to see that I have jotted down about being poor in the spirit means several different things. One, we are solely dependent upon God. When you really think about that, when you and I come to a point in our life that we are solely dependent upon God, how amazing would that look? The second thing, that definition is the real blessing of life comes only when a right relationship with God. When we really want to experience a blessing, it's going to happen when you and I get in a right relationship with God. The third one. We are no better than the next person. We never look down upon someone. We never think we are better than them. Yet Jesus, he said, riches in that verse of heaven belong to the poor in spirit. He says right there, it belongs to the poor in spirit. Self-reliance robs us of the gift that God wants to give you and me. God has so much to give one who recognizes and needs to call upon Jesus Christ. A few weeks back, I got to go to a funeral and be with the family about this, and this was Shannon's grandmother. Now, there was an incredible, incredible lot of stories I got to hear about her. She came and visited a couple times, and that was the only times I got to meet her and let her know how what kind of granddaughter she had. She said, I know, I'm praying. And, but one of the things was, you, all, you heard a lot of people talk about her food and how she loved to cook for people. And the family asked her multiple times, Grandma, would you please give us some of these recipes so once you're gone, we can still have some of this great food. Well, she didn't want to give up a recipe. She, she wanted that to be hers. So she finally bowed down and said, yes, I'll give my recipes to one of you and, and so that they can be passed down through generations. Well, guess who she passed it down to? Shannon. <laughs> once it, she got past preheat the oven, she lost her. <laughs> you know, she said, that recipe's going to the grave with me. Because <laughs> she knew it wasn't going nowhere when she gave it to Shannon. But no, we say that in fun, and we know this lady was an incredible godly lady. And that was a story after story that you, that you would have heard if you got to be there in a part of the situations. There are probably people in your family, your loved ones, fam- mama, daddies, that you could categorize as a godly individual. Well, I want to show you something that impacted my life through this lady's funeral. I want you to see this picture on the screen. You see that? That's a Bible. Do you see what kind of condition that Bible's in? It's kind of worn, torn. In case you would like to see it in real life instead of a picture, I got one of those Bibles that's up there. Now, if you have a granddaughter like Shannon, your Bible's going to look like this. But one of the things about this lady is through this Bible, 
She has notes. Pages after pages of notes and prayers through this Bible. You see, one of the things they talked about is wasn't about her she have a big fancy house or a big checking account. They talked about her Bibles. They talked about her spirit and her love and her relationship with God. Do you realize that if you and I wore our Bibles the way we wear social media, our Bibles would look like that? Sad thing is we probably posted or copied and shared more things on social media this week than we have in a month in our Bible. When was the last time you wrote notes and things in your Bible? You see, there's people that leave financial goods and property and stuff to their loved ones when they're gone. Guess what happens to that stuff? It gets spent, it gets sold, it gets thrown away. But you see, when you pass something like this down, that changes someone's life. You see, your checking account won't change someone's life. Your fancy cars and fancy boats, your fancy house and your fancy property won't change someone's life. But that wore out Bible will. You see, if you and I want to look at these red letters of the Beatitudes and where it starts, it talks about being poor in spirit. How are you doing with that? You say, well, yes, well I, I'm old in age. I, I ain't got time to wear a Bible out. Let me tell you something. If you still got air in your lungs, you got time to wear a Bible out. It's time to get on your knees. It's time to start opening it up, and it's time to start reading it. And not just reading it, but applying it. Because the first thing that Jesus wanted to teach his disciples, he wanted to teach them here in the book of Matthew, starting off this chapter, it was about their spirit. When I first came to Oxford, I got taken with a group to Mission Arlington in Texas. And I got to be with several different adults there in that group, but there was one man that was part of that group. His name was Benny Ray. He was real quiet. And I was like, man, am I meeting up to this guy? Because this was really a trial for me to see if I was going to become the youth minister there at Yellow Leaf at the church across town. I'm like, I don't know how this man's sizing me up. He ain't saying nothing. Well, as years you get to know, Mr. Benny didn't say a whole lot. But toward the end of the week, he came up to me and he said, boy, you got what it takes. You got my vote. You see, he had a humble and gentle spirit about him. But he wasn't looking at the things I possessed and owned. He wanted to know my spirit. He wanted to take that week to get to know my spirit. Could I lead and disciple for the Lord? Well, you see, if you want your spirit to be changed, you got to spend time with the author who made your spirit. You see, you're not going to know about what's in the book if you don't spend time with the author who wrote the book and whom created your spirit. You see, that is the obligation that you and I have. Now, you say, Wes, now you've just given us some personal things. I, I don't like to jump around in the Bible. I like to have one verse and go right through that and preach it. So if you have a pen or paper, you can write down Luke chapter 18 and Luke chapter 19 because I don't want you to waste your time turning there. I don't ever want to take for granted that you may know these stories. But I do want you to take it not from my word but for the word of God. And I'm going to share some illustrations with you scripturally. Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle and for a rich man to get into heaven. Well, one of the things that happened is Jesus had just encountered a rich young ruler. He had all these possessions, had all this stuff. But there was one thing lacking. He didn't have a spirit that was willing to submit to God. And then all of a sudden, as you come on down, there was Jesus later encountered Zacchaeus, who was a wealthy, notorious sinner. Is a tax collector. Despite Zacchaeus' wealth and all he had, he recognized the poverty of his salvation and he found salvation. 
because he was willing to submit to God. The opposite of being poor in spirit is being proud in spirit. Now you see, when a person takes and spends time with the Father in the Word, there's some things in these scriptures that will convict your heart, convict my heart, change your life, and it changed my life. But the only way that we're going to encounter them is if we spend time in the Word. I want to read a couple illustrations. In Luke chapter 18, verse 11, 12, it says, The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, Lord, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithe all that I get. You see, he was basing his relationship on God in a performance. He was a proud person, self-centered. It wasn't about Christ-centered. But then, when you drop on down to the next verse, in verse 18, 13, the Lord describes a man of poor spirit. And here's what it says. But the tax collector, standing far off, wouldn't even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, this tax collector probably wasn't poor financially, but he realized he was poor in spirit. When we're truly poor in spirit, the spiritual world, world becomes more important than the material and physical world. So my challenge to you this morning is, what about let's spend less time with our social stuff and more time with the spiritual stuff? You see, this is what a change of life. See, you can take a Bible and you can wear it out. And I'm going to tell you, you won't get wore out. God will be ready to do something great with you. But you see, you can't just go buy a Bible and leave it in your car all week and bring it in on Sundays. So you've got to open it up Monday through Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to wear it out. What about this week? Instead of turning on social media sites, why don't you turn it off and turn on the Bible? Start jotting down some notes, some stories. Do you realize that how this family honors this lady? They're making copies of the stories that she prayed for them. They're taking wisdom that she wrote in these scriptures and applying them to their life. Do you realize that these same stories and same scriptures may impact your life and your family's life? You realize your Bibles would be passed down to your loved ones. They going to find a Bible that's just a Bible or are they going to find one that you wore out? Let's pray. Father,